Uncivilized vitality. We're in the upper peninsula of Michigan in the Delaware mine, taking a little tour, a couple hundred feet underground. And this would be a good place to talk about Plato's allegory of the cave, because that seems to be a real central theme for us in uncivilized vitality. If you make the comparison of the, the cave being uh, the idea of civilization, which we define as a corruption of the natural process of human societal organization and personal development. Ooh, look at this. So, yeah, check that out. So the allegory of the cave, for those that aren't familiar, was written by Plato and it was an attempt to explain uh, the forms or the actual um, concepts like truth and, and justice. And he talked about it as the forms, but either way. So uh, the allegory of the cave, imagine a cave <laughs> such as this, right? Imagine a cave and there's a group of people that are chained up in this cave at the bottom of it. So for instance, uh, like this. So I would be facing the back wall of the cave and behind me would be a low wall like that. And then from the other side of that wall, there's a, a bright fire burning, which casts shadows on the wall, but I'm chained to the, the short wall and I can only see the back of the cave. If I've been there since I was born, the shadows on the wall would be my only reality. And then if I were to somehow uh, escape from my bonds and stand up, remember I've been chained since I was small, so I'd probably have very weak muscles. So being able to escape your bonds and stand on your own would be the first, the first pain. Well, this says, this opening is a miner's crawl hole used to move equipment between levels. If not flooded, you'd be looking down 100 feet to level two. Ooh. Anyway, got distracted. Um, since we're here, let's see. Uh, my light. Oh, that's water. Wow, that's clear. So. Anyway, back to the allegory of the cave. So I'm chained. The first pain would be of the five pains. And that's not classic. The five pains is something I came up with back in college when I was reading about it, studying. Uh, first pain is breaking, getting free of your bonds and standing on your own. After you've stood up, the second pain would be looking over the wall and that, that bright pain of the firelight. Because remember, you've only ever seen shadows. And then after the shadows, the third pain would be getting past the people that were holding like the little uh, silhouettes of birds and uh, little people that were making the shadows casting up on the wall. These are, or were, the, the sophists, I think, is what, that's all how, how I've always interpreted it, uh, that Plato meant. These are the people that were in charge of keeping the you and the other people chained up in the cave entertained. So you just looked at the pretty shadows on the wall and never mind what else was going on. So you've stood up, you broke your bonds, the pain is standing on your own, and then you have to look over the wall and that bright fire light you've never seen would be the second pain. The third pain of escaping the cave would be fighting past the sophists, whose job is to keep you in the cave, manacled and entertained with, uh, you know, just small entertainments and maybe throw some food over the wall once in a while. And then the fourth pain would be when you finally come out of the cave, you see the bright sunlight. You see reality for what it is. It's not just shadows on the wall. It's not just empty entertainment by the, the sophist and the other people whose goal is to keep you trapped in the cave. So now you've seen daylight and reality. That's the fourth pain. Now comes the fifth pain. You have a duty to go back in the cave and try to talk to the others who are still chained up down there and say, listen, these shadows, 
that they play on the walls for us, these things they feed us, this is not reality. You have to get out of the cave. You have to see the world for what it is, and sunlight. So that's the fifth pain. It's a pain because you realize that people are not gonna wanna face those pains and they're gonna resist. Like Plato said, you know, they're gonna, they may even to the point of resisting, you come down and say, listen, the truth is that there's a whole other world up there, right? Reality, nature, sunlight. You have to go through some pain to get there. You know, they list out the four or five pains. They're gonna resist so violently this upending and complete paradigm shift of their world that they may actually attempt or successfully kill you for breaking that truth to them. So that's the allegory of the cave, uh, kind of pretty crudely explained. And uncivilized vitality parallels the, the allegory of the cave by trying to inform people that, hey, the way uh, civilized societies are organized, it only benefits a few. The, the sophists, the sophisticated politicians and elites who arrange for our capture and uh, our small entertainments, the shadows on the wall and the small food we get, they go up and bask in the sunlight. They understand the world and the reality and they don't, they don't care. And if you try to get out, not only will the, the sophisticated uh, elites, the sophists control you and try to keep you in the cave, they'll turn your fellow citizens against you. They'll say, don't go up there and see the sunlight. It's a lie. You know, it's not, it's not true. Just look at the pretty shadows on the wall. So the best thing you can do is do your best to become uncivilized as soon as possible. Get out of the cave. Work your way out. See reality for what it is. And then go back down in the cave and get some other people. So that's uncivilized vitality. Uh, general approach to civilization as a, a corrupting uh, concept. Right? So we say we're civilized, we should be socialized. And I don't mean socialism. That's another uh, conflation of a term that was taken by the sophist to kind of steal our ability to leave the cave. Um, and they confuse that with social circles and supporting each other in a, a humane society, a well-ordered human society, as opposed to a civilized society. Civilization is like being trapped in the cave. Read Plato's Allegory of the Cave. Uh, check that out. See what you can learn from it. And if you ever get the chance to get to the upper peninsula of Michigan, we're in the Keweenaw Peninsula, and uh, there's about eight of us on this trip. They're behind me. They were in this tunnel. I think I'm completely butt lost at this point. Oh, well. <laughs> Allegory of the Cave. If you get the chance, get up here. We are in the Delaware Mine. We have also, uh, this is a self-guided tour, which is probably why I'm going to die down here. But uh, we've been Delaware Mine, the Quincy Mine. These copper mines in the Keweenaw Peninsula are uh, fabulous. We also met a delightful couple on the road. We were hiking a retired miner named Bill Salmi and his wonderful wife, Ione, and their dog, Rusty, who was pretty aggressive. Bill told us all about Michigan's uh, official gemstone, which is that little green stone, which I'm forgetting the name of now. Chlora something or other. And he showed us uh, these gemstones and he, he gave us, they're very small gemstones. They're like 80 to to $100 each for these teeny tiny little stones. He showed us how to find them and then he gifted us each a stone or a set of stones. And then Shane, about a mile down the road, he looks down and sees about <laughs> a 20 pound rock that must have been loaded with hundreds of them. Anyway, pretty cool. All right, now I've drifted off both uh, narratively and in the mine. So I'm going to try to find my way out of the Delaware mine. Uh, and you'll know if I do, if this video ever gets posted. But there, uh, Plato's Allegory of the Cave. Check it out. Read it. Reread it. Read it again. Civilization is the cave. So that's it. Uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, comment. And if you've been to Delaware mine, let us know. Uh, leave some comments about your favorite uh, cave exploration. All right, that's it.
another reason to want to put it in the mind. Right. Just 